today, it's warm. Today I have on my no sweat clothes, my sandals, a clipboard, <laughs> Bible, and I wanted to talk a little bit, as though that were possible for me, about the Biblical Christian Network and to welcome people that may be seeing this video for the first time and wondering, what is this Biblical Christian Network that we haven't seen any real videos about or any teachings on or anything else about it? You know, what do you believe in? What do you stand for? What are your principles? You know, what are your statement of faith? What what is it that makes you tick? You know, and why should we look at the Biblical Christian Network? Well, I would hope you're looking because God directed you, but maybe not. <laughs> but everything in the Biblical Christian Network has meaning. You see, I wear clothes that don't sweat for a reason. And there's a meaning behind that reason that comes from the Bible. The priests wore clothes that when they were doing the work of God, they were told that they were not to sweat. So they designed their clothes and they acted in such a way that they were calm or peaceful, relaxed, enjoying it, so to speak. And so when I dress like this, I'm reminded of what God is doing with my life and the Biblical Christian Network. When I put on these shoes, you know, it's kind of interesting is that these, you know, we could get into, you know, like scriptures that talk about, you know, the preparation of the gospel of peace. And maybe it would apply because, you see, this is a real genuine shoe. This isn't like some figurative allegory. This isn't something symbolic. These are really my feet. Yep, they're my feet. But there's a story behind these shoes. You see, I got these shoes in Jerusalem. Yeah, really. About the year 2000, approximate. Might have been just before or just after the turn of the century. And uh, I had gone to Jerusalem kind of as a missionary, a missionary at large. And I was dealing with Calvary Jerusalem and other ministries that were there. And uh, kind of humorous thing happened was that Calvary Chapel at Klamath Falls that made me a missionary at large. There was a young man that had left from there. His parents were attending. And he had gone into my way. Used with permission. Now, I didn't really know him that well and didn't really meet him when he was in Oregon at the time. And he went on with YWAM to, you know, the national, wherever they trained them, and I think it's in Colorado. And then he went on to here, there, wherever. And somehow he wound up in Jerusalem. I didn't know that. Then one day, we ran into each other. And I saw his face and I knew him. So I talked to him and we shared and I helped him. He was lost, you know, and I was pretty much ingratiated into Jerusalem by then. You know, I kind of lost my Americaniz Americanizations and was more Israeli than I was American. And so I was pretty comfortable, you know, and so I got together with him and we became, you know, immediately, you know, clinging to each other. And I, uh, before we left each other, he gave me these tennis shoes, or tennis shoes, he gave me these sandals, which I wear, and I gave him my fedora, which was kind of a really nice fedora that was very precious to me. You know, my mother had given it to me before he died. And uh, I don't know if he still has it, but the interesting thing about this shoe is that, let me show you it. It doesn't show any real obvious signs of wear and tear. The funny thing is, is that this shoe has been to Alaska in the snow. It has been to the hot springs in Oregon. It's over 12 years old. It gets worn every summer. It goes into chlorine pools that are over here in Sacramento at uh, Raging Waters. I think it's been every summer for at least three years that I know. I wear them almost every day during the summer. And if you look inside the treads, 
if you look at the back and the front, and although it's curved right now because it'll probably flex itself back out, it doesn't share, show anywhere. It's a little weird. It's a little miraculous. It's a little bit godly. And that's kind of what's happened in my life, all my life. Weird things keep happening to me. You know, like when I first got saved, I was immediately thrust into something that I had signed up for before I got saved, the Marine Corps. And then because of a disease, I was thrust out of the Marine Corps honorably and moved into, you know, Balboa Naval Hospital where I really wanted to end my life because I couldn't be a Marine. And yet God thrust me out of that and spent the next 10 years developing me, but also being preparing me, I guess, I thought at the time, to die. Because you see, I was told when I got out of the Marine Corps, and then I wound up back in the VA hospital system that not by one, and not by two, but several doctors, social security doctor, and a regular VA doctor, and a surgeon, and a G, uh, what was it, uh, not general practitioner, but an internal med, that I wasn't going to live past 30, and that I'd be lucky to make it that far. <laughs> it's kind of weird. It kind of reminds me of these uh, shoes, you see, because not only did I live past 30, I went on to get a network engineering degree. I went on to become a journey bo journeyman boilermaker, and I worked like out in the hot sweat, sweaty sun when it was 110 degrees up in the Tri-Cities in Washington State area. Was you know helping a welder, you know, I was doing all these different, you know, muscle building jobs. I was like, man, you gotta have some you know, meat on you in order to do it. And I was doing it. Me, little old me. <laughs> You know, the long hour days, you know, 10, 12 hour days, you know, 10 days straight, those kind of things. Yep, that was me. So, it's always been a little weird, the things that happen in my life, because as a Christian, I've always expected they happen in your life. And I just want to relate those things to you about what happens in life when you are a Christian, a born again Christian. So you see, the Biblical Christian Network was started with a purpose and a meaning, a design, a pattern, something that people would be able to say, that's weird, but it sounds practical. That's kind of different, but it sounds like it's real. That's kind of unusual, but it sounds like it happened, because it did. Because you see, I'm not here, really, to convince you that you should get saved. Oh, that's your choice. You want to go to hell, you can go to hell. I'm not here to stop you from doing what you want to do. Because if you don't want to be a Christian, nothing is going to make you become one. It's your choice, one way or the other. I'm just here to tell you about what it's like for me, man, because I'm digging it. <laughs> man, I have seen my life screwed up and come out of it smelling like a rose. I see my life devastated and challenged and come out of it, wow, amazed by how much God has blessed me. And I don't mean like name it, claim it, and you know get into some kind of guru thing where I'm following one church or one ministry or one thing or one another, but I am following one God, you know. And it isn't Jesus only, but it's knowing Jesus and having Him introduce me to His Father, and God the Father actually blessing me with you know like His Spirit and kind of like all kinds of neat things that amazed me throughout life because had he not done so <laughs> I'd be dead and so the Biblical Christian Network was started based upon my abilities in communicating individual ideas through writing through talking through helping others that were going out and being missionaries and doing work you know, helping them behind the scenes through developing libraries, you know, that people would go and get free materials from. Free. Notice I said that. That I could encourage people to read their Bible in a way they may not have thought of, like it being a communication device so they could open it up and like, hello, God, is that you? And telling them and reminding them that God does speak and He is real because I don't know about them, but for me, 
he's always been there to talk to and to speak to. So the Biblical Christian Network became kind of an a idea in the future that I always wanted to have to just throw out to the world Jesus. Because Keith Green warned me, you know, a long time ago in a song, you know, that, and I don't mean personally, but to all of us, that, you know, I, I wanted to build a highway to the sky, you know, but all my hopes would come tumbling down because it wasn't about building this giant super mega highway or mega church in order to get everyone to go to heaven, but it was really just like, hey, you know, sharing what I know and helping someone else along the way. Because as much as I like sometimes mega churches, I really like many ministries that kind of like touch each other face to face. And that's kind of like what, over here you can't see it that well, but if you've seen it on the web, you'll see that picture. And that's why I put all these up, is that the Biblical Christian Network shows the world. And what you can't see is that the world has Jesus' face you know, imposed upon it, and then being held like this are hands, which I imagine is the Father's hands, or ours, whichever you choose. And even what you can't see behind that is the rainbowic effect of all the colors of the rainbow that are around the throne of God. And what you can't see behind that is a menorah that is imposed inside of it, that is shedding the light. And it's such a beautiful symbolic symbolism of all that God is that I used it when I created it and then I looked at it and I thought wow that's biblical that's what a biblical Christian should look like you know just ah, holding Jesus and sharing Jesus to the world and so that's how it started the logo but it became so much more because you see as a writer I had already written some books and Oh, I did a, my first book was uh, Genesis Age. It was pretty rough, pretty good, you know, I published it, got it out, had some people read it, and one person liked it. <laughs> the rest weren't willing to tell me, even though the, this was like kind of a demo one. Um, they didn't want to tell me all the mistakes that were in it, and I told them ahead of time, look, there's all kinds of typos and stuff like that because it's a demo. I wanted to complete the rough manuscript to get it, you know, ready for later, which later became Genesis Age, same thing, but a little better cover, a little different, quite a bit development. But the original one that I wrote, you know, way back when and spent a lot of time on, I wanted to get it out, you know, because I wanted to talk about what we look forward to the millennium, what we have to look forward to as far as God is still inspiring us and teaching us about creation, and that there might be more to creation than meets the eye. And I also brought up all the aspects that I said in this entire 12-part series, 12-book series, that every wild idea will be answered of why it could be a little bit right and a little bit wrong and God could still fulfill it without it being contradictory to one another. And when people talk to me, they understand what I mean, but usually, you know, it's hard to communicate that in a book and in a story form because it is a Christian fiction. So once I had written that book and published it, you know, I kind of kind of got excited about it for a while and then kind of set it down and then I got back involved in doing missionary work, you know, in a practical way and helped this church get started and had to deal with some ministerial issues that I realized that, you know, <laughs> once again, I was reminded of why, you know, I don't pastor a church because <laughs> I'm too busy pastoring pastors it seems like you know because a lot of times they go off deep ends and have all these issues and they get insecure and they make wrong statements or actions or do things that they just spur the moment you know and just like you and I you know they they have their own failings <laughs> and sometimes it affects people you know and they go spiraling off and I used to rescue people I used to call it when people would go spiraling off quit going to church. I'd go find them. And then I'd get them involved in some other church or ministry if they were really that upset. We usually were. <laughs> or when pastors fell, sometimes I'd go looking them up, you know, and find them and try to encourage them. Because God God doesn't take a pastor and say, oh, that's it, you're done. No. He says, I called you, I anointed you, and you're there for life. You didn't know that? Check out some of these ministries. <laughs> 
But in Biblical Christian Network, that's what we wanted to do, was to be an encouragement, not a discouragement. We wanted to be holding, as it were, the face of Jesus, because as we were holding the face of Jesus, that face morphed into your face. That face morphed into every single person that's called upon the name of the Lord. That is saved. Because in as much as we've done it to the least of my brethren, we've done it unto Jesus. So how I treated each person I learned in life would come back to me, first of all, because God didn't want me to carry that into heaven and be judged. But he wanted me to suffer the consequences of my actions now, so I wouldn't be judged later. And that I would learn reconciliation and mercy. I would learn to go from judgmental to forgiving, from condemnation to consolation to go from a place of pointing out the faults in people to encouraging them to develop a personal relationship in a way they never thought of, in a way that would bring butterflies, you know, flying by and hummingbirds, things that they would enjoy and participate in and say, wow, at the moment you were saying that, a hummingbird went by. That's spooky, as my wife would say, and I'd say, that's God. <laughs> But one of the things that we developed, or I should say we, when I say we, I always mean me and the Holy Spirit and God and, you know, people that have inspired me along the way, you know, in ministry, because I'm nobody special. I'm the accumulation of everything that people have taught me over the years that I've learned and applied to my life, because I never felt like I was a genius. You know, I felt like God had taken a piece of Romaine, a piece of Chuck, you know, a piece of this, you know, a piece of that, a piece of a local community church, a piece of Judaism, a piece of this here or that there, and applied it to my life so I could share it in a way that made sense to people about who God is, the Father, and the Godhead, and who Jesus is, the Son of God, and who the Spirit is, you know, the Holy Spirit, and that the Spirit of God, you know, and Jesus and God were all together in creation and created it, you know. That should cover some of the things that you wanted to know about, what do I believe in? <laughs> but the Biblical Christian Network was founded upon the principles that it would base itself into seven areas of influence that in some way the Biblical Christian Network through all these ministries that you see behind me these are logos every one of these pictures you see whether they be the Biblical Christian Network video today following Jesus one step at a time last generation network news Biblical Prophecy Today, Didibo, uh, Jesus is the Answer, that's from a website, uh, Last Generation Digital Magazine, Prophecy Research and Development, Technology, uh, Psalms, Countdown, uh, the books, all the chap books, the chapter books, all the, let's see, uh, tracks, all the, let's see, what else is there? all the uh, proclamations of the gospel in the kingdom of good news, um, all the network news services, you know. There are seven networks that actually compromise, and I think eight, but I'm not sure. I know, I lose track. But we'll have that all up here eventually. But the reason why I built all this was to let people know what the Biblical Christian Network was about. It was a conglomeration of eight different networks, a news service, Bible study service, uh, video, teaching ministry, video, preaching ministry, video, devotional ministry, you know, a bunch of different aspects of it. And that all of those would basically come under seven areas of influence. The first area of influence that the Biblical Christian Network was consumed with was visual. What goes into the eye? What inspires you? You know, a lot of people don't realize this, but we are visual people. You know, you can put an image in front of somebody and it will immediately attract their attention in some way. Now, there's a negative side and a positive side to visual stimulation. It can cause people to go in the right direction or it can cause them to go in the wrong. Sometimes subliminal advertising was using visual stimulation to create in people imagery that would program them in a negative way or in a way that would cause them to do something without their knowledge of it. That's not ethical morality that's technically taking technology beyond the obvious usage to benefit humanity and to program it in a way that makes it kind of deceptive practices. So 
the Biblical Christian Network and visual stimulation, we thought that when we saw things that were inspiring, we wanted to share them. But we ran into this whole idea of like this massive copyright stuff. Everybody was copywriting this, that, and the other thing. And so we said, well, you mean to tell me that I can't use a picture of Jesus because you've copyrighted it so no one can use it unless they pay you for it? And I was told yes. And I thought, I'm not using it for money. I'm not using it to promote myself. I'm using it to inspire people. And I was told, you can't do that. So I said, oh. They said, well, if you're a library, you can use parts of it. I went, oh. And the Lord worked it out, because I do Christian libraries all over the place. <laughs> Tape lending libraries, book libraries, all kinds of libraries. So in the library reproduction you know, laws within the framework of copyrights, you know, I was able to use some in those days of pictures that I was able to abide by the law and at the same time honor the person that was being used. Then later on as you know, the web went crazy and people were just kind of like passing out pictures as part of their social media thing, somehow <laughs> things have gotten a little bit carried away. But praise the Lord, you know, God is working that one out for people. But in all of these ways of visual stimulation, it made you realize that what you see in your eye, if it's light, would make you full of light. What you see, if it's darkness, would make you full of darkness. And because this generation that we live in grew up with television, they were filling their eyes full of violence, full of relationships that were probably not the way real relationships operate. And they were filling themselves with all this information that they didn't know they were programming themselves with. Whether it be Simpsons, you know, telling you that you know, you're supposed to talk this way or walk this way or act this way, or whether it be you know, YouTube videos or, you know, whatever maybe. may um, be. Archie Bunkers, you know, that's going way back. But in modern times, you know, you've gotten where everything keeps pushing the envelope to make it more shocking to you. Like horror movies are even more shocking than they were before because it's all about visual stimulation. So to counteract that, the Biblical Christian Network decided, hey, you know what? Let's just share visually Jesus. So we do. That's one area of influence that the Biblical Christian Network is very proactive on. We point to positive imagery that we can find and promote on the internet as well as in publications and using them throughout the world. Another area of influence that we felt very strong about was verbal, that we needed to somehow make it audible for people to hear the Word of God, that they would be able to hear God speak. So we wanted to remind people in two areas. One, that God speaks to you, and that God said He would speak audibly to you. Now, we also promote our devotional series with a lot of ministries from other areas that have audio Bibles or have audio commentary, that we try to make it aware to people that they can hear the Word of God being spoken. Because a lot of times people forget that faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God, and hearing doesn't mean reading. Reading is for a different benefit with the eyes to program your mind. Hearing is by hearing. So a lot of people we realize, you know what, they're really not hearing, are they? Except if they go to church and they hear it read, which if some like Calvary Chapel will do, they'll read the Word of God most of the time. Well, then they got to where some people get carried away. Now they think they have to yell, you know, go out and read the Word of God preaching, meaning that they're yelling it at somebody. And that's not exactly what God had in mind. But there's a place for hearing. And so we got into wanting to share verbally those things like I do now that God had inspired, both in experience, practical living, demonstration of the testimony of what God has done in my life, miraculously, as well as sharing where you may be coming from in a way that you didn't think of that I would be presenting to you because it's something that I've done too. So I would share that and you would relate to it. So verbal, to hear the Word of God through the videos and through other means, but we haven't got into radio and don't plan on it, or just audio, really don't plan on it. But it's possible. The other area that we wanted to approach and influence was emotional, because in Christianity there's a lot of hype to be emotional without being devotional. So for a long time when we first started video, we had this concept of evotional, meaning that emotional devotion 
that we would share relating the Word of God through the devotions and through commentary on the devotions. And that was our way of touching the emotion with the Word of God, to inspire people with the passion that I feel just by talking about Jesus, you know, how my emotion comes across demonstrated in a camera setting, like you can see right now. You know, I start talking about Jesus, I start getting animated, and I start smiling and start feeling the Holy Spirit, you know, just giving me new memories of what I've gone through and reminding me of those things that He's taught me and just taking me on a trip, you know, to heaven and back, you know, just to kind of like, oh yeah, wow, yeah, that was awesome, <laughs> that was cool. But anyways, to emotionally demonstrate and to emotionally connect with people that are either hurting, blessed, encouraging, or discouraged, or whatever emotion they may be going through. Because we all need emotional support. And also in the area of the seven areas that we're talking about that we wanted to influence in Biblical Christian Network was inspirational. We wanted to make sure that in every area, in all these seven that we try to do in each and every venue, we would be inspirational. We would inspire you, not tell you to follow us or to do what we do, but to inspire you to go on with what you're doing. Meaning that you would feel, hey, I can do that. Kind of like that song from the course, like, I can do that. I can do that. I saw them dancing. I can do that. You know, because a lot of times that's all you really need is to be inspired. You know, hope is one thing because sometimes when you're discouraged, you just need a little hope. But to be inspired, you're like, Bingo, the light bulb comes on and you go, I can do that. And that's what all of this ministry wants to always promote, is that you can do all of this that we're doing in every area, whether publication, writing, inspirational, all the different venues of media. Because there's social media, there's computers, there's everything that can be done free. Literally. You really can. Everything that they charge you for, you can find someplace that it's free on the internet. So there is the opportunity to always provide, and that's why you can use this model when it comes to Biblical Christian Network. If it's free, it's me. Because we will not take money, nor will we charge. Because we can't. It's just one of those things that Jesus won't let us, you know. And while I'd love to, you know, and it would probably make a better camera or better sets. <laughs> maybe, maybe even some decent glasses. <laughs> I probably wouldn't have shoes that don't wear out then. They probably wear out in a month. So, in a lot of ways, you know, I'd love to be part of all these different ways that, you know, churches and people and pastors use these, you know, like cruises or you know, these fancy ways of sharing Jesus, but I can't. I can only do as God inspired me, and I hope to inspire you, because if you're poor and needy, I'm trying to inspire you to be where you are, as you are, to inspire someone else along the way. Because while you may need inspiration, as you inspire someone else, you will be inspired. I know, that's how I live. <laughs> Inspiring you inspires me. So, in the other area of how we do it on every video and every part of ministry is the practical level. We want to always share in some way something inside of it, like even the videos or the books or the pictures, some practical connection that makes it able to be used in your normal everyday world today. Because I don't care about tomorrow. I mean, even in Biblical Prophecy Today, we talk about today, what works for you today, what God is doing today, what God says today, how scriptures apply today, how prophecy applies today for you, and how you can use that in your life today. We don't talk about what's going to happen in the future only, like in prophecy. But in everything, we want there to be a practical, not just practical application, because that's always somebody applying some interpretation in order to make it fit. But we wanted it to be something that's demonstratively real. Like, hey, you know, how do you handle, you know, too much TV? You know, I mean, you don't go out and tell someone, hey, you know what, you got to give up TV. Because a person isn't going to. We're going to be practical about it and be real. We're going to say, we know you're not going to give up TV, or to give you a different example, porno. I know darn well that most of the people that say they never watch porno lie. Because, first of all, they brought it up, so they're thinking about it. And then they kind of, you know, if you checked on their Google history, they either clicked on a link and accidentally got assaulted by their, you know, 
porno site that was trying to promote it, or you know, there's some link that went wherever, or they were just willing to admit, yeah, they've been doing that since the original Adam looked at Eve without there being, you know, based upon the knowledge of good and evil, and suddenly went, uh-oh, now I know we're naked. Because <laughs> he went, wow. And then each, they got together and made, you know, fig leaves, which to me, somebody in a fig leaf looks more appealing than somebody looking just normal, you know, naked. <laughs> so, let's be real, you know, what we want to do in the practical area is to always be real about it. Our practicality is always about the reality of who you are, as sinful as you are, and as righteous as you are, as well as who I am in both areas. So, we are practical, and in the other areas of influence that we want to inspire people or to bring Jesus and awareness of is in the physical, that there are things you can do every day of your life. You know, that it's not about health and Dr. Oz diet or the Spock routine or this, that, or the other thing, but in the Biblical Christian Network, we specifically use uh, tech, yeah, technology to bring out the idea of technology and thinking so that you would come to that place of concluding that you can create for yourself different ways of doing things. Like we have, you can't see it down here, but we bring up in the middle of the devotional the t tomato plants that were growing in a milk carton with a, a uh, trash bag put inside that holds, maybe not a hectare, but a certain amount of dirt you know, that can grow a plant that you can move it around where the sun is and you can water it and grow your own tomatoes. It may be limited, it may be whatever, but it's very efficient if you wanted to develop into something further. Like you can do conveyor belts, you can have all kinds of oscillating varietal ways of bringing the sun into you know, a certain growing aspect. You know, Because in the one hand you see people that are deviant you know, in creating these weird environments so that they can grow their pot or smoke their weed or whatever they do. But you don't see people taking the same inventiveness from them and saying, hey, you know what, I could grow healthy stuff, plants, you know, I could grow vegetables, I could grow fruit, I could have fruit trees, I could do all kinds of things that would make me not just feel better eating, but I could learn something from it while I'm doing it. Because Jesus used a lot of analogies to gardening. And so you see there's always a practical reality to our Biblical Christian Network and everything that we're doing. And then it's spiritual, because everything about Biblical Christian Network is spiritual. There's always a spiritual application. There's always Jesus in the midst of it. He inspires us to do what we do, and that's why we do it. There's no reason for us to have this or for me to sit here and to talk, except that Jesus is here, except that God is in me, except that God is in you and we are communicating to each other by way of the Spirit. Not just video and not just audio, but by way of my Spirit is communing with your Spirit and we're trying to touch each other and say, hey, I've been there, I know, I understand, and I can help you along the way and you can help me. Because it's not me being always wise and smart, but it is about God bringing the two of us together so that together we could go to Him and find the answer. I may know a little more along the way than you do because maybe I was a little more obstinate and argumentative than you and I can present to you what he shared with me but then I can also give it to you to say go ask him so that you would not just prove things because anybody can prove things right or wrong and then still be wrong but that's so you can go to him in a communicative way and hear him speak to you even as I do. So the Biblical Christian Network as we presented to you is based upon those seven areas of influence because the bottom line is we want you to know there is a living God we want you to know that God is real that yes Jesus came died rose again you know was buried you know rose again but then beyond that he has always appeared to people since then he continually is dealing with us through his spirit at times sometimes Pentecostal type people sometimes very conservative type people, sometimes very wacko type people, sometimes very normal type people. But that in any way, shape, or form, God is always seeking any way and always to communicate to you in some way. So that way you can discover that there is a way to know that God is real. That you can discover that He's not just real in a philosophical way. So that you could say, yeah, I believe that the universe was created, you know, 
And that's about it, you know. But that God is interventional. He intervenes in people's lives. He comes specifically to them every day of their life. And when you find that out, He changes your life completely. <laughs> then you'll be figuring out, where can I hide? You know, that's what David even asked. Where can I hide from your spirit? Man, if I make my bed in hell, you're there. He says, I'm getting kind of tired of this. Every time I do something wrong, I remember you're there. So every time I go, wherever I go, you're there. Darn it. <laughs> so there's a positive side to finding out that God is real. And there's a negative side to finding out that God is real. Because once you do, you kind of go, I think I better get off the legalistic religious kit and get back onto the grace kit because otherwise I'm not going to be forgiven. <laughs> People that know that God is real, believe me, they are not legalists. <laughs> they don't go anywhere near legalism. <laughs> They're like, mm, I don't think so. <laughs> me? What? Uh -uh. <laughs> I know me. me. So, the Biblical Christian Network and Today we took the day off, we did maintenance for this and for our sets and for trying to, you know, coordinate our house better that we filmed from. And maybe make a demo video for people to watch on video so they'd see, you know, the most recent introduction to Biblical Christian Network. And also so that if you've seen that link on my Facebook page or on my web pages or wherever that says Biblical Christian Network, you would know what it is. Because it is really a lot more than you realize. And I don't have everything up yet. <laughs> but the, this is meant to demonstrate to you that in any area of your life you can run with it with God and go with it and develop it in a expressive way from your heart to His. And you can share that with others because that's all He wanted you to do in the first place was to be a witness of Him to the world and then share and teach and care and be there for everyone around you. Because if you do, if you choose to do that, as opposed to seeking your own satisfaction, and your own selfishness, that you choose to deny yourself some time, whatever time you choose to deny, or you deny yourself and take up your cross your entire life, whichever, that God will use His Spirit in you to do things with you you never thought would come out of your mouth or have the ability to do through your hands much less hear yourself saying except that that which you've seen, heard, and handled with your own hands will be that which you get to communicate to others and that's what Biblical Christian Network is all about that which we have seen that which we have heard and that which we have handled with our own hands we communicate unto you and that is Jesus